Living longer, living healthier, living better than ever before. Welcome to Mountain Pacific's Healthy Living for Life, a weekly series that gives you the information, education, and expert insight you need to become an active participant in today's ever-changing healthcare climate. Here now is today's program host. On average, 130 Americans die every day from an opioid overdose. How did we get here? And what's being done to battle this national crisis? Welcome to Healthy Living for Life, a show dedicated to helping you do just that. I'm your host, Beth Brown. Today, we talk about changes in opioid prescribing practices, alternatives to using opioids, and how these changes can affect you as a patient. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Before we talk about what's changing with opioid prescriptions, we want to make sure we understand what opioids are and why they can pose such serious risks. Joining us first this morning is someone you've certainly seen on our show, our own Lisa Sather, and thanks for being here this morning, Lisa. Thank you, Beth. So we've talked about opioids a lot on our show lately, but it's such an important topic. So let's start by just making sure we all understand again, what are opioids? Sure. So opioids are a class of medications that include the illegal drug heroin, we've heard about that, these uh, semi-synthetic medications, codeine, morphine, and then other uh, prescription pain relievers. And obviously when they're used under the care of a health care professional for appropriate clinical reasons, they are effective, they can be safe, um, but obviously want, we want to make sure that folks you know, don't, don't misuse them. We often see opioids used for either treatment of pain, sometimes for uh, products are used for the treatment of cough, and one of the side effects of opioids is constipation, so sometimes they're used in antidiarrheal preparations. Okay but they're mainly used for pain. That's correct. And so not all medications that are used for pain are opioids though, right? So can you talk yeah. about some of those medications that are prescription opioids used for pain? Sure, that's a, that's a great topic. So the opioids have been around a long time and they originate from uh, the poppy, the opium poppy. Mm -hmm. And those naturally occurring alkaloids would be those uh, that are morphine and codeine. And then you get into the semi-synthetic um, opioids, which would be um, your hydrocodone, commonly known as Vicodin, oxycodone, commonly known as Oxycontin, and then various other derivatives that are based off of that, hydromorphone, oxymorphone, and the like. And then we get into the synthetic type opioids that are basically man-made. And the, the common ones that we hear about are fentanyl, fentanyl patches often used for the treatment of cancer pain, often used in pretreatment for various um, procedures in hospitals, and then tramadol, and then uh, lastly but not least, methadone, which is used for pain, but also used to treat uh, opioid abuse disorder. So this is probably a little bit of a tough question, but the reason we're in this crisis right now is because opioids have been over-prescribed. How did we get here, and why are so many Americans dying from opioids? Yes, that's a great question. So, you know, for about the last 20 years, there was a great big push for the uh, the providers in the community to treat what was being called the fifth vital sign, and that would be pain. The American Pain Society really felt like that was an undertreated situation, and and that's difficult because pain is very uh, it's it's very subjective. It's based uh, different for different people. Um, those other vital signs, which we can measure, like pulse and blood pressure and heart rate and respirations, those are very easy to measure with instruments, and pain is not. So, uh, within um, provider practices, it was it was really a big push to try to make make sure we evaluated pain at every single visit. And so that happened. In addition, there were new medications that came to be um, oxycodone is one of those, oxycontin to be specific, where we really weren't sure of the addiction potential, the true addiction potential of, of those particular medications. So the use of those medications started to escalate. And then as that happened, we really did see kind of some increase in and opioid use disorder, addiction, and even overdose deaths like you're talking about. So why are opioids addictive? Right, so um, that's a great question. Opioids have a special properties. They bind to certain receptors in our brain and spinal cord and in our brain they they work in the reward center of the brain and that is the one that makes us feel good. It also controls pain and in, it's important to mention and it's in specific individuals that might be at risk for um, addiction. In addition, you know, there's the other side effects that aren't as aren't as significant but can be and that's drowsiness, dizziness, and confusion. Um, and so we would just, we obviously want to make sure they're being used appropriately and in the appropriate situations. 
Okay, and so uh, if I'm prescribed an opioid, then what is it that I need to know? Sure, so the most important thing really are that um, we want to make sure that you're not taking them uh, any differently than as prescribed. We want to make sure that you know you talk to your doctor about the fact that there might be something else you can use to treat your pain. There are other medications that are effective and might be less risky for a certain individual. Um, those are really the biggies. You know, you want to make sure that you have that conversation with your provider and that you dispose of any unused medication. That's a biggie and 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 keep them out of reach of uh, children or others, that's important. And so we've talked about disposal on the show before, but I think it's worth repeating. How do you make sure that you get rid of those drugs? Yes, absolutely. So a um, couple things. There are prescription drug tape back locations that are located within pharmacies, can be accessed through the Department of Justice website and in um, sheriff's offices and whatnot throughout the state. The second component is if you don't have one of those in your area, you certainly can do that yourself. You put the medication in an undesirable substance like kitty litter or coffee grounds, put that in the garbage, strip the label off your prescription bottle and throw it in the trash. There are exceptions to that. Some medications are very dangerous. We don't want you touching, handling those, and you don't want those being thrown out in that specific manner. And those specific medications like fentanyl patches have to be disposed of through uh, flushing down a toilet. Okay, so we probably have time for just one more question. Lisa, you're a pharmacist. What role do you think pharmacists should be playing in helping to get America through this opioid crisis? Yeah, that's a great question. Pharmacists are a valuable member of the healthcare team, as we've talked about before. And so pharmacists on the front line can help to educate patients when they receive an opioid prescription about the risks, about the side effects, about taking things you know longer or in greater amounts than is necessary. In addition, pharmacists are really valuable in looking for red flags as, they, you know, as they're dispensing a prescription. Are there early unexplained refills, is there consistent cash paying? Those might be a situation where there might need to be an evaluation recommended for potential opioid use disorder. Pharmacists also are helping to educate physicians in the community as we really look towards the new CDC recommended guidelines for prescribing. So those are just some of those areas. Perfect. Thank you so much, as always, for being on the show and for such great information. Thank you, Beth. We need to take a break, but coming up next, the national opioid crisis has both doctors and patients looking for safer alternatives to pain relief and pain management. We'll take a look at some of those after this. Stay with us. We'll be back in two minutes.